Hey guys, this is just a short tutorial video outlining how to use my parametric camera mount tool. Okay, start by heading over to the Google Drive link in the description and downloading the Fusion 360 project file. Okay, now open up Fusion 360, click on the data panel in the top left hand corner, click upload, then here you want to press select file and upload the parametric camera mount v3 and click upload. Now, set it to editable and open up the parametric camera mount file. Okay. Now that the camera mount file is open, to actually make modifications to it, we have to head up to modify and click change parameters. This is where, for instance, you can change your standoff spacing, standoff diameter, camera angle, standoff height, the thickness of the like camera mount, so like the TPU thickness, how far forward and how far up it sits, the housing height and width, um, so, for instance, a Foxia Predator V5 has a 14 by 14 millimeter housing, and a Runcam Nano 90 has a 18 by 14 millimeter housing. Then you've got the lens to screw distance. So this is pretty much how um, long of a distance it is between the screw hole out to the furthest part of the lens, or the lens length if you want to put it that way, um, and then the lens diameter. Most of these values are by default um, ready for a Foxia Predator V5. Okay, now to have a bit of a demonstration. So for most people, the main things we're going to be changing is just the standoff spacing and the camera angle. So let's just say you run a frame with wide standoffs and you run a 60 degree camera mount angle. Okay, totally fits to conform to that. So you can see super wide standoff spacing super steep camera angle. Um, pretty much every mount like this you'll have no problems with the mount breaking. Um, obviously some really extreme values will break it, so like let's just say I set a height of like 3, right? You can see the camera's just like way too low to be realistic and then a lot of the features end up breaking. But as long as you stay within sensible bounds you can pretty much make any camera mount you want. So from trial and error, I know 12.5 is about as low as you can go. No, okay, but depending on the camera angle, around 12.5 to 13. Let's try 14. Okay, so you can see 14 works. is pretty low for a 60 degree camera angle. Um, but then you can go quite comfortably quite far up if you want a really high camera. There you go. Works pretty good. Um, and just one more example, we'll do something really unconventional. We'll go... 30, 6 mil. let's say you run like a 35 degree camera angle, let's run it quite low at like a 12.5, like we said before, and out like 7. <laughs> okay, it looks really strange, but you can see we haven't broken it yet. Um, all the errors in the timeline, as long as it looks fine as the final product, none of the errors really affect it. Um, they're designed to break in some places. Um, but yeah, this is just being silly. It pretty much works with every sensible combination that you want. Um, yeah, and then when you want to export your silly camera mount, or very sensible one, you just click open up the body section, right click on the body, click save as mesh. Um, you want your settings the same as I have them here. Click OK. Name it whatever you want. And save to your computer in whatever folder you want, and done. You've got an STL in your downloads file ready to slice and print. Okay, hope this helped you guys out, and I'll catch you in the next one.